Hey, what's up? We're back. We're, uh, I gotta get my hair on my face here. I need like a hair net or something. We're back. We're gonna do another male repro video. We got another dude right here. Let's start down here. The external genitalia. We did a lot of this last time, but this model is a little bit different. We have the scrotum, which contains a testy. We keep the testy in the scrotum because it enhances sperm production by being a few degrees cooler. On the back of the testy, we have an epididymis. So sperm are made in the testy, testosterone is made there. Sperm are going to travel to the epididymis where they are stored and they are, and they are matured. Let's have some bad English and bad grammar in, our, in every video here. Coming out of the epididymis, we're going to have a vas deferens. Now it's hard to see the vas deferens in here because there's all this other stuff. There's blood vessels. There are nerves. There are lymphatic vessels. And they're wrapped in a connective tissue structure. We can kind of see that in the outside here. And that this whole thing is a spermatic cord. I think I had a vasectomy. But the wrong, uh, it's not a very good way to have a vasectomy. We don't want to cut the blood vessels. There we go. Get back in there. Reversed it. And so this is a spermatic cord. Spermatic cord comes up, comes up, comes up, and goes through the inguinal canal to get inside the abdominal cavity. And we see our vas deferens continue right there. There it is. Goes past the ureter. The vas deferens comes down. It's going to join up with the seminal vesicle. Remember, the vas deferens is going to get wide. We call the wide part the ampulla. It's going to join the duct of the seminal vesicle. Remember, the seminal vesicle makes about three fifths of semen volume, uh, basic fluid, uh, nutrient sources, other enzymes and chemicals necessary to enhance the prospects of fertilization. We see the prostate gland here as well. Prostate gland, of course, contributes about uh, three-tenths of semen volume, more nutrient sources, ba another basic fluid, more chemicals necessary for fertilization to happen. Underneath the prostate gland, we get a big layer of skeletal muscle here. This whole big layer is the pelvic diaphragm. The part of it right here beneath the prostate gland is the urogenital diaphragm. All right, other external stuff that we can see here. Well, I guess it's not external because it's been cut here. We have a penis here. We have the glands penis. We see the penile urethra, the external urethra orifice. On either side of the penile urethra, we've got the corpus spongiosum, which expands to form the glands penis. The corpus spongiosum is an erectile tissue. It's got a lot of vascular spaces to become engorged with blood during an erection. We also see the, actually I like to sh turn, we turn a little bit, we got a better view of the corpus cavernosa right there. Nice corpus cavernosa, there are two of those. That is the main erectile tissue of the penis. Um, other things we can see if we take this off, take that off. On the inside we can see the ejaculatory duct nicely here. We can see the prostatic urethra, the interior of the prostate gland. Urogenital diaphragm again. Of course, we have the urinary bladder with its rugi. We have the detrusor muscle, the internal urethral orifice, the internal urethral sphincter, another ureter right here, testicular artery and vein right there. And that might be it for this model. I think we, we did a little bit more with the previous one. I think that's what, all we're going to do here.